To say that I'm excited for this one uh, would be an understatement. This is the first time I've had an AMD flagship GPU. Their absolute best since they weren't competing with Nvidia with the 5700 XT. And now, well now, I literally have a GPU that goes toe to toe with Nvidia's best. And while not as good as a 4090, is also less of a fire hazard. So today, we're going to unbox, test, and give our preliminary opinions on the RX 7900 XTX, AMD's current best GPU. So, let's get right into it. Hello and welcome, my name is Wolfie. You're watching Greater Than Pi, and thank you. Thank you for coming. And if, if you're a subscriber, I really appreciate you for uh, you know hitting that subscribe button. But if you are not, why don't you sit back and watch and uh, see why we've been growing on YouTube for the last two years. So, Radeon RX 7900 XTX. This is literally AMD's best GPU this generation. It comes in, at $1,000 at its starting MSRP, and then there's like $100 here or there uh, in variance between the different models. This one in particular has a $100 tax thrown right on top of it. This one is from MSI. It is their Gaming Trio Classic, which is almost their highest line. The only thing higher is the Gaming X variants, which have an overclock applied. Now, in the past, I've actually kind of talked about not having an overclock applied out of the box because AMD ends up tweaking these GPUs over time and they get better without the overclock. I actually have a video kind of in progress showing that. So point is, this is a good GPU to start with here. It's got a pretty beefy cooler. The Trifrozer coolers are quiet. They're kind of overbuilt and they also come with a decent amount of RGB which you can kind of see from the box, there's some on the front of it, and there is also a RGB MSI logo on the top. Looking at the box, we've got uh, pretty much the standard amount of GPU stuff that uh, we tend to talk about, how much VRAM it has, which this has a whopping 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Um, that's more than I think my first computer had in RAM and VRAM combined. On the box, we also have our obligatory feature set that needs to be in the front so people can see it when they're buying a GPU in the store, despite them always being stacked like this on the shelves. So uh, we've got ray tracing. Yeah, it, it can do ray tracing. It could do it last generation. Radeon Boost, which is, uh, I've gone over the feature before. It's pretty cool, but I'm curious why it's right there in the front. And Radeon Anti-Lag, which, is a good feature, especially if you're a competitive gamer. Now, that being said, if you are using a GPU this powerful, I should hope you shouldn't have to use Radeon Boost and you shouldn't have to use Radeon Anti-Lag because at this point, you're targeting 4K and 1440p at high refresh rates, if not, you know, maximum graphic fidelity, etc. Over here, we got some stuff about the MSI Trifrozer cooler. It's a triple uh, design fan. It's got heat pipes, good stuff. We'll take a look at it as soon as the card's out of the box. Um, then we got this little like blurb section over here, which again has uh, kind of features that are like no brainer, like record and stream at the same time. Any GPU built within the last 10, 20 years can do that. So that's that's not really that big of a feature. Uh, AMD noise suppression is the newest feature on there. And then also the smart branding, which they still haven't executed on, but there's supposed to be a one button press smart tuning feature. Um, and it's supposed to come within this generation, so you should see it soon. And then also the main things about the GPU, which include how many compute units, which I'm actually happy to put that right on the box, uh, the Affinity Catch, all that cool like technical stuff. So I'll put it up on the screen if you want to read it. Now, a couple of really cool things about this architecture in particular, as opposed to RDNA 2 and RDNA 1, which successfully we've got a GPU in all of those generations still kicking around. This generation actually has a different clock for different aspects of the core, which is really interesting. I gotta see how it plays out. 
um, especially with overclocking, since I do tend to overclock my GPUs. And since it doesn't have one out of the box, I will definitely be seeing at least if it can do rage mode, which is a basic overclock that you can do on almost all AMD GPUs. So without further ado, let's get into this thousand dollar GPU box. Let's do a goodies MSI has packed in here. I hope they give us like stickers or something. It doesn't feel like much. All right. Let's take a look at our thousand dollar purchase. Oh, yeah. It looks exactly like a uh, 70, 6800 XTX or 7800 XT. Uh, it may feel like one, but it's definitely heavier. <laughs> um, oh gosh, that is, that's a workout. All right, let's set her back in here for right now. So it does come with a GPU support bracket. I tried using it last time. I have a more sophisticated GPU support system inside my case. The GPU itself, which I just mentioned, is quite heavy. We've got a manual. No comic this time. I'm a little disappointed, MSI. Last time you gave me this really cool comic instead of this like pretty generic looking manual. Oh well, maybe you're not doing it this generation. So really, no goodies in the box. No stickers, nothing, huh. Well, it did come with one goodie, uh, which is the Last of Us Part One. Um, I have that as a freebie, but that's from AMD, not MSI. I wonder if actually, because of the fact that there aren't many goodies in here, if this GPU is that competitive that MSI doesn't have room to like throw in extra goodies. Like AMD came to them and was like, hey, I know it costs this much, but we need you to uh, keep the prices competitive. And MSI was like, well then fine, we won't include a golden lucky statue in every single purchase. Wah. Oh man, that backplate has some, ha that, that's why. Okay, let me actually pull out my uh, 50 or 6800 XT uh, in order to, have some reference here, but there are three individual heat sinks with their own heat pipes in here. That's crazy. And that's, there's reinforcement along the top here. And that reinforcement is to keep the GPU from sagging as it sits in the slot. That's crazy. And that back plate, that back plate is thick. Oh, it looks like we have a switch here. What is this switch for? Silent or gaming. So we got dual BIOS on the card itself. That's good. The PCB actually goes all the way through to the edge of this card. Like this is not a short PCB, which means there's no blow through fan here. Interesting. And then there's also, what the heck? There's some screws here at the end. Is that to go into the GPU support? Wait, did they change up the GPU support? No. No, this is still standard. She is a very pretty looking card though. And before I forget, MSI actually went with a non-standard layout for the ports on the back here. There's actually three display port and one HDMI. And what comes standard is actually a USB type C to display ports and the two display ports and then an HDMI. And then AMD did actually spec these out with the latest display port uh, technology, which has actually been a very big sticking point in the uh, current generation of NVIDIA GPUs. Gamers Nexus did a whole piece about how um, having the most recent form of display port on here isn't that big of a deal and that, you know, it was kind of like uh, you know, BS marketing, this GPU is not even gonna be able to like really cap it out. And then after he released that piece, Austin Evans found a way to do it. And unfortunately it seems like in a bubble, this should be as a gaming GPU, uh, kind of overkill, but in certain niche cases, like extremely large fields of view and even some future VR headsets, 
th this may end up being necessary and could keep this GPU around a little bit longer because of it. All right, so this right here is uh, my Trio. This is a 6800 XT. Ugh. I actually just took her out of the system to prep for this video. They almost look identical. <laughs> but a couple of uh, interesting differences. Oh, actually, you know what? Their coolers are pretty much the same. Oh. So this one's a little bit taller. This is the 7900 XTX. And this one has the dual BIOS on it. This one has a little bit more RGB. But shot for shot, if you were to hold these two GPUs up against each other, you wouldn't necessarily be able to immediately tell the difference. They're about the same thickness too. So realistically, if you could fit this GPU in your PC, you could fit this GPU. So this is actually a drop in upgrade for my main PC, but at the same time, it's also a drop in upgrade probably for a lot of other smaller cases. So let's go ahead and throw it in and see how it performs. So we're back and um, I didn't think it was possible to actually blow me away this much. I'm almost speechless at the performance of this card for a card that looks almost identical to the one that was removed from the system and installed. It's, it's amazing. So let me go over some preliminary numbers with you. Mind you, this is without any overclocking, uh, any real optimization, just raw out of the card numbers in its gaming mode since it has dual BIOS. So let's talk 3D Mark. Speedway, we got a 6,165. Port Royal, a 14,987. Time Spy, GPU score of 29,795. Fire Strike, a GPU score of 78,750. One. For heaven, we actually benchmark this at 1440p using a semi-custom preset. Uh, with the quality set to ultra, we got 4,985, high uh, 5,280. For superposition, we just used the canned presets. So for 1080 medium, it was a 34,397. 1080p high, 33,763, because those are so close, we're probably hitting a CPU bottleneck before anything else here. 1080p extreme, we got a 17,048. 4K optimized, 22,906. And 8K optimized, 8,650. Now, all those numbers, would be impressive if you're just kind of looking at it as a numbers perspective, but um, what does it do in games? Well, let's take a game like Borderlands 3. It's a little bit old, but it's still kind of difficult to run the bad A setting, except on this GPU, because um, when you're hitting 167.63 at its absolute worst, you're doing pretty good. Now, if you drop it down to ultra, you can get it to 175.69 high, uh, takes it up to 199.47 FPS and medium 220.91. All of this, by the way, is at 1440p. Cyberpunk 2077, again, 1440p. Ultra, 145 frames per second. 
high 155 frames per second, medium 162 frames per second. And for, you know, just to screw around, ultra ray tracing, 75.5 frames per second and medium does 88.87 frames per second. Meaning, yeah, while you are kind of brute forcing it, you can ray trace. Forza Horizon 5, the extreme preset got us 147 FPS, ultra 155, high 188, and medium 188, which means we're probably running into a cap here at high and medium. Tiny Tina's Wonderland, we were able to get at bad A 153.87, ultra 171.95, high 195.37, and medium 254.96. Now what you're seeing here is actually a lot of performance at 1440p at the absolute highest presets, which in most games you probably shouldn't use anyway, you're able to absolutely dominate and hit over 144 frames per second. Now the question is, is it a thousand dollars worth of a good time? And it's complicated because at one point I've never had more consistent frame times. Like I can physically tell that my frames are way more consistent at those frame rates. I look at a game like Forza Horizon 5, which actually has a lot of frame time and pacing issues. And it's smooth enough that at its maximum graphic preset, it just is impressive. And there's also the VR element. I do play my games in VR at 144 Hertz on a Valve Index. And from what I've tested, it's worth it if you are doing that kind of gaming. The pacing is very hard to show and I need to see if I can find a way to actually test frame times for the full review, but it is definitely something that's noticeable. But again, is it a thousand dollars worth of worth it? Currently I have no regret, but we'll see in a couple months when we do the full review if I do. But that is where we're ending it today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, consider subscribing, and I will see you next time. Wolfie, out.